Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're continuing the emulation series with a patron voted option, CEMU or CEMU, with a major focus on Breath of the Wild. Watch to find out how smooth I can make the experience, some surprising performance losses, and more. First up is the news. It turns out that I just passed 15,000 subscribers before I could even figure out what to do for a 10,000 celebration. I'm still trying to figure out what to do, but if you have any ideas, please leave a comment below. I'd also like to start with a major shout out to my wife for running the benchmarks while I parsed the data and workshopped ideas. This video was another massive undertaking and having her help was invaluable. Moving into the video proper, here's the timestamp to skip to my recommended settings. As usual, I recommend watching to see why and how I came to the conclusions that I do. With that out of the way, let's move on to testing methodology. The tests were all done with the following configuration. A quarter 3 512GB Steam Deck, SteamOS 3.4.4, and CMU version 2.0.25, although there will be more info on this in a bit. The settings used for CEMU are on screen now. Namely, we're using Vulkan with async shader compilation enabled and vsync enabled as well. I'll also take this moment to say that all of these benchmarks are for Breath of the Wild specifically. Every other Wii U game I ran was flawless in comparison, and only Breath of the Wild was a real struggle to get running smoothly. For reference, the other games tested were Twilight Princess HD, Wind Waker HD, Super Mario 3D World, and Bayonetta 2. Here are the graphics packs that I used for Breath of the Wild. FPS++ to go over the 30 FPS limit, extended memory to allow CMU to use more memory, and the graphics graphics pack to allow for selecting resolutions. Something I do want to mention is that I'm testing in 16x9 aspect ratios. Setting the resolution to 16x10 ratios causes UI elements and shadows to stretch, sometimes looking much, much worse. That said, I didn't notice any major performance differences between the two, so if you can't stand the black bars, feel free to use a 16x10 ratio. I also wanted to test in the most demanding part of the entire game, the Korok Forest. Neither the Wii U nor the Switch can actually run this region of the game without slowdowns. If the deck can handle Korok Forest, it can handle anything the game can throw at you. Each test was done starting from the top of the Deku Tree, then running through one of the Korok Trials. Each test was comprised of the worst the game could throw at the deck, including heavy volumetric effects, usage of multiple shaders, physics calculations, enemies, and particle effects. To reduce the variability in each result, the Infinite Hearts graphics pack was used. This allowed for minimal variance in fight times and led to fewer retests. I did some extra testing to verify that the Infinite Hearts pack didn't affect performance as well. Lastly, any change you make in CMU will only persist if you use it in desktop mode. For now, know that you'll need to alter settings in desktop mode even when playing in game mode. With all of that out of the way, let's cover the differences in CMU versions. CMU is an interesting piece of software. Originally closed source and Windows only, it went open source and added a Linux version in 2022. What this means is that it still has a long way to go until it can be classified as a mature Linux project. During my testing, I tested the following pre-built configurations of CMU. The Windows Legacy version, 1.27.1, the Windows EmuDeck version, which is 2.0.25, and the Linux App Image version, 2.0.25. Both Windows versions performed similarly, but the Linux App Image version in particular had numerous issues. During testing, I experienced broken buttons in the UI, the inability to change the control scheme with or without Steam input, broken gyro functionality, several crashes not present on other versions, and an inability to be interacted with in game mode about half of the time. As a result, I decided to custom build both the Windows and Linux version to see if anything differed significantly. Both were built with commit 1CF7226, pushed on the 6th of January, 2023. The Windows version performed within margin of error in every instance, while the Linux version had all the same issues as before with the exception of broken buttons in the UI, which seemed to be resolved. 
in testing that needs to be consistent and reproducible, I can't rely on a version that has those inconsistencies. So for this video, I'll be using the Windows version installed by EmuDeck 2.0.25. Hopefully, the Linux version will get better as time goes on, since the open source community has their hands on it now. Let's move on to a small tutorial on how to remove stuttering in CMU games. While playing, you'll get lots of stutter by default. The stutter gets more infrequent as time goes on, as fewer shaders need to be built. I wanted to tell you how to get a complete shader cache before anything else, since I did all my testing with it installed to prevent inconsistent results. First, go to the address on screen now. The link is also in the description below. Second, search for the game you want shaders for, in our case, Breath of the Wild. Third, find the version that matches your game region and press download. Fourth, open the downloaded file and extract it into the CMU directory so that the shader cache folders merge. And fifth, agree to any overwriting warnings. That's it, from now on you'll have almost no shader stutter. With that out of the way, let's get a baseline. As we can see from the baseline here, even at stock, we're able to essentially tie Wii U and Switch performance. Remember that on native hardware, the Korok Forest can dip as low as 20 FPS, which is perfectly in line with what we're seeing here. On the other hand, the Wii U and Switch are limited to 30 FPS, and we don't have to make the same sacrifice here. The deck manages to get 45% better averages than either console can manage, while having similar lows. This chart really tells me that the major hurdle to a good experience will be consistency rather than raw frame rate. I've played and watched hundreds of hours of Breath of the Wild, and frame drops are my major gripe on both consoles. So, let's see where the bottleneck lies and get down to business. First up is CPU load. We can see that the CPU is fairly well utilized at an average of about 58%. This might mean that only a few threads are being used, or it could mean that the bottleneck lies elsewhere. Looking at the GPU core clock, we can see that we're only ever touching around 1000 MHz, which is nowhere near the 1600 that the deck has to use. The bottleneck is definitely not GPU performance. The GPU memory is high, but not maxed out. It's not very likely that this will be a bottleneck, so let's move on. The RAM usage isn't very high at all, which makes sense given that CMU can only allocate up to 4GB of memory with the extended memory graphics pack. This is a particularly interesting game to find a bottleneck in. Nothing seems like a great candidate for immediate improvement, so I decided to go the other direction and start utilizing some common fixes. Seeing what helps performance most will help identify the true bottleneck if we're lucky. As a disclaimer for any new viewers, or a reminder for older viewers, the following section will be using fixes from my Easy and Safe Health and Performance Boosts video. I recommend that you go watch it if you haven't already, link in the description below. That brings us to our first comparison results with my recommended tweaks. 4GB of VRAM, a 16GB swap file, and a swappiness of 1. As you can see, most of the results are within margin of error. However, the 1% lows are 28% higher, breaking the 30fps barrier. Looking at the frame times, you can really tell how much the experience evened out. There are still some spikes, but having the extra memory to play around with really smoothed out the play experience. Since these results are better, we'll use them as a baseline going forward. Next is huge pages. I haven't made a dedicated video detailing this yet, but I explain what huge pages are in my God of War deep dive, so if you're interested, definitely check it out. Regardless, it's really simple to enable. You need to install the System Toolbox Decky plugin, go to the quick access menu entry for it, and enable huge pages. The setting will persist through game changes and swapping to desktop mode, but rebooting the deck will disable them. I plan to release an update to Cryo Utilities that can enable them permanently, and I'll cover that in an upcoming video, but for now we'll have to stick to this method. With that out of the way, let's look at results. Averages, 97th percentile, and 1% lows all took a 2% hit. But interestingly, 0.1% lows are a massive 39% higher. Having lows as high as that is unheard of in the Korok Forest, so I'm really happy with that result. It also shows that some of the latency spikes could have been caused by memory allocation slowdowns. The frame time graph is a great representation of just how smooth the game felt here. The deviation from frame to frame is microscopic compared to the default performance. Since this is definitely our best result, it's our new baseline. Now for something that I honestly didn't expect. 
disabling SMT absolutely butchers performance, in stark contrast to what we saw with Switch emulation. Averages in the 97th percentile are similar, but 1% lows and 0.1% lows are 27% and 53% lower respectively. Based on the number of recommendations I've seen to disable SMT for CMU, I'll assume our recent update has drastically changed the CPU scheduling, but with these results, I definitely can't recommend it. Let's try to give the CPU a little more power in a different way. I tried many permutations of pinning the CPU and GPU, but pinning the CPU to 3.5 GHz and the GPU to 1100 MHz was the best result I could get. As you can see, most results were within margin of error, but the 0.1% lows were 45% lower, so this definitely isn't a great way to get more performance. Let's move on. I didn't think that using OpenGL would help, and I was very right. It barely manages to be playable a significant portion of the time, and it took over 45 minutes to boot into the game. Next up, I wanted to try something else some posts said to try, running Simu in desktop mode. As you can see, performance is much worse than game mode. The overhead of running the compositor and DM really harms the overall feel of the game, so let's move on. Looking at what happens when we reduce the settings to the bare minimum with graphics packs, we can see that we gain 5% on averages, 6% on 97th percentile, 12% on 1% lows, and 11% on 0.1% lows. While the improvements aren't to be ignored, none of them are so drastic as to move the game into a better FPS bracket. In addition, the settings here made the game look like diamond-studded sandpaper. I don't think the minor performance boost is worth the fidelity hit, so it's unlikely that I'll be using it. But if you want to use the same settings, pause here and use the settings on screen. And now for something completely different. We have good performance in the Korok Forest, but how about the rest of the game? This test was done by running from the Dueling Peaks stable to Kakariko on horseback. Averages were within margin of error, and the 97th percentile was 5% lower, but 1% lows and 0.1% lows were 17% and 48% higher with my settings. Lastly for this section, we have a run from the Cryonis Shrine to the Stasis Shrine over Mount Hylia. Averages and 97th percentile were within margin of error again but the 1% lows were 21% higher, and 0.1% lows were 38% higher with my settings. The next section is something new to the channel, docked benchmarks. Thanks to my generous Patreon patrons, I was able to afford an official dock and give you all what you've been asking for. Without further ado, let's compare the best performance we had with the baseline in Korok Forest, both on 1080p. We can see that the tweaks do a massive favor for the lows here, and 1080p gameplay felt like it was running on the Switch in every way. On the run to Kakariko, the tweaked version gets 12% higher 1% lows, 15% higher 0.1% lows, and only loses 6% on the 97th percentile. And lastly, the Mount Hylia run had 9% higher 1% lows, and 18% higher 0.1% lows. Overall, both 720p and 1080p gameplay were much smoother with the tweaks. That said, some of you may have noticed something odd. 1080p performs better than 720p by a decent margin, whether docked or not. It seems like there's a point where the GPU is more necessary than the CPU and gives us marginally better performance. This made me wonder, what do higher resolutions look like then? It's not the most surprising result, but 1440p or 2K results were almost playable. Someone who isn't very sensitive to low frame rates could probably play this just fine. 4K, however, is a different story. The 4K results gave me an idea. Here, we can see that Simu runs Breath of the Wild at 4K almost as well as Yuzu does at 720p, which is crazy since it's rendering 9 times the number of pixels. Now that we've had our fun with resolutions, what else can we do? We can mod it. This is running at 1080p, the shadows and reflections are dialed up a notch from the unmodded game, and this also includes the massive Second Wind mod, which is incredibly demanding and totals over 700 megabytes on its own. Despite all this, it's running identically to the Switch. So, how do you install mods? It's harder than it sounds on Steam Deck, but I really wanted to share how I got it working, so I made a companion to this video detailing how to do it. 
The video, Breath of the Wild Mods on Steam Deck, is linked in the upper corner of the screen and in the description below, so be sure to check it out after this video. As usual, here are some other things I tried that didn't work out. ZRAM and ZSwap had identical performance. CPU pinning at 2, 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, 2.8, 3, 3.2, 3 3.4, and 3.5 GHz had degraded performance. GPU pinning at 400, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1000, 1100, 1200, 1400, and 1600 MHz had degraded to identical performance. Using 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 CPU threads, aside from SMT manipulation, had degraded performance. Manually using game mode run had identical performance. And disabling CPU mitigations had identical performance. Alright, now that we're experts in Simu, it's time for the presets. First, I wanted to mention that these presets specifically mention Breath of the Wild, but anything that's not in the game-specific section is applicable to all Simu games that I've tested. Reminder that the other games were Twilight Princess HD, Wind Waker HD, Super Mario 3D World, and Bayonetta 2. In regards to game-specific recommendations, each one uses the FPS++ graphics pack even at 30 FPS. I found that frame pacing was better while using it and there are no real downsides. With that out of the way, let's get into it. First up is Battery Saver. It was very tricky to get this running well on low power, but I managed to get it done with a few visual concessions. If you don't want to relive awkward family gatherings that one time that your deck died on the way to your parents' house, use these settings. This gave me a playtime of 2 hours and 42 minutes, and the expected performance is a mostly locked 30. And here you can see how it compares to the native Switch version. Second, we have the smoothest preset. It goes without saying at this point in the video that we won't be able to lock it at 60 on the deck, but that doesn't mean we need to settle for the stock 30 either. If you're sick of being sniped by guardians and want to have just a bit more time to hit that shield parry, use the settings on screen now. This gave me a playtime of 1 hour and 45 minutes, and the expected performance is a mostly locked 40. Here's how it stacks up to the Switch version. Next up, we have my favorite preset, Prettiest Handheld. I went all out to make this the nicest looking and feeling way to play Breath of the Wild on a handheld, including better shadows, lighting and reflections, further draw distances, higher foliage density, and all with better than native performance. If you want the sun to hit that ridge just right, making the hills sing, then use the settings on screen now. This gave me a playtime of 1 hour and 38 minutes, and the expected performance is a locked 30. Let's compare it to the Switch version. Lastly, we have the prettiest preset, but for 1080p docked mode. These settings aren't quite as high as the handheld version since the extra pixels afford us less headroom, but it still looks better than the native version at 1080p. If you want to switch from your Switch since your Switch don't please no more, then use these settings. The playtime is technically infinite since it's docked and plugged into a power source, but the expected performance is a near-locked 30, which is identical to the Switch. Let's see a comparison with the Switch version at 1080p. All 
Alright everyone, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As a major Zelda fan, I'll be starting a new playthrough of Breath of the Wild using my presets and a bunch of mods. Maybe I'll even stream it. As always, be sure to like the video, like Link likes Princess Zelda. Comments on whether you think the series should be called Steamulation or Emubytes. Shoutouts to Joel's Bowls are Joel's Goals and Games Bloke for the ideas I liked the most. Subscribe to Swordsman Newsletter to hear Swiftblade's words of wisdom. And ring the bell to be warped straight to the weather vane in my next video when it goes live. Thanks to all of my patrons who financed the doc I used in this video and some other cool stuff coming in future videos. Verge4469, Fail, Frankie Odgers, Lemon, Brian D, Yi Luo, Pi K, Madam Slug, Spiffman, Bradley C, The Duck, Jean Clich, Jimmy Champagne, Christopher Comer, Keenan Brody, Mario Diaz, Chase Melancon, DevOps D Adams, Nathan Wilkie, Rafaniak ZX, Montana CB7, Shane Duncan, Cam Leavenworth, Kazab FZ, Samuel McConan, Joseph Pizza, Ivan P, Vic, Quarantined Gambler, and Richard Estes. Thank you to my YouTube members, Eugene Brednev, VV, Prashid Shah, and The Wildcat. And lastly, thank you to Okinoki, Alex Talk, Ricky NG, Prizemisla Plata, Belko QQ, and Adam V. Meister for donating with a super thanks. I am so sorry for my pronunciation of those names. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.